everyone, this is Neil R. King for Random Acts of Cartooning, and I'm going to do a convention sketch today. Uh, but first... Hey everyone, so influences for this um, episode. Uh, the Walking Dead, uh, probably one of the most popular um, books of the time, and it, it really built this whole audience for the, uh, the zombies. I feel like it really brought things back. And this is like a huge compendium. I, I didn't buy the separates um, all those years. So um, it's really a great testament to, uh, to a couple creators mostly um, that dealt with a lot of these things. So if you're looking at it, um, you know, we have a couple different people working this more in Adler. Um, but what I like about this whole thing, especially the zombie part, and what they're really looking for are all the real super tight inks here um, with the zombies. And it's unique. Uh, it's a black and white comic. But uh, I think what they do really well is uh, they show a lot of depth with uh, all there's the zip -a tone in here. There's a lot of different tonal uh, things. It's probably not zip -a tone anymore, uh, probably all on the computer. But lots of texture, lots of interesting little things that are going on. And it really built an audience for the zombie stuff again. Uh, but I still think, I mean, um, I think they really have control over what they're doing. I think it's a kind of a cartoony style. This is not a typical. Um, it's an image comic, but to me, it's not a typical artist to me, um, this style. Um, to me, it's a little more cartoony. And I think it's really successful. It's a beautiful thing. And um, and I've gone through this many times. I like all the effects that they use. There's a lot of dialogue. You know, a lot of things being said between characters. I think they do a really nice job of telling the story and having the action parts that people are interested in also. A lot of emotion stylistically. I think it's really a beautiful, beautiful book. Uh, if you've only watched the series, you should get yourself out there and take a look. And I think you'd be, uh, be really happy with all of this. I really like the style. There we go. Okay, just getting started with this sketch. Um, the character is Daryl from Walking Dead, very famous character. A lot of people know him. Um, what I did quickly before this is I did a quick little pencil sketch to kind of get it started. And this one is really about the inks. There's a lot going on. And for me, I just kind of laid in some shapes to get it started. Uh, this uh, sketch is actually for a friend of mine, Francis. Uh, for her 18th birthday. So happy birthday, Francis. And so I'm really trying to do a nice little piece here. I am never thinking of myself as a realist, but I do try as much as I can uh, for specific characters, especially since um, most people think of this guy, this character, uh, this actor, um, before they would think of anything in the book. And they... Uh, the actual um, series took lots of liberties on the book, and but I really do uh, think that this character is very popular. He's got a great face. Um, so when I get started with something like this, I'm just trying to get some of the angles off. I think of his face as a very angular face. He doesn't have very big eyes, uh, but his big cheekbones and that hair is the stuff that I'm kind of focusing in on to try to get the... Uh, the disheveled kind of very straight hair. It's always in his face. Um, and he's always kind of torn up clothes and he's always in the middle of some type of a battle thing. And uh, the big thing about him is that uh, crossbow. So I've seen lots of pictures of it. And um, so I'm right now with this specific piece, just again, trying to um, make sure that, uh, that I've got most of the like detail that I want. I know that I'm going to go back into it 
uh, with my Pentel brush pen, um, which is much more texture. But this is kind of a, a newer pen that I've been using. It's another Pentel pen uh, marker, and it's permanent, so it's it's pretty good. And but it's a little bit, so it's a little smaller, so I can get a little bit more detail. I still need my microns to get the real detail. So I'm starting to go in there with uh, this crossbow, and I the reality of a crossbow and a drawing of it is I think the reality of it we just think of it as a kind of a different looking types of thing but his that's a really big gun <laughs> like I'm trying to make this as much like the actual photos that I've seen uh, of it now when you're doing something dynamic like this you don't have a lot of space you got to see his face but you also have to see that bow because he's kind of really known for the crossbow so I had to look at some reference for this I just want on I would usually at a convention just pull this information up just a little bit pictures of his face and I got that crossbow again I his the way he has it much bigger though so so for this I don't want to overdo the crossbow because it really is him and I, I don't want to struggle too much with it but this is typical again like when when you're at a convention people come up and they ask you for lots of different things and uh, like I've drawn many people from movies uh, and I just kind of go after it and I tell them, I'm like, you know, I'll do my best to, for a likeness. Um, but more so I, I kind of look at it as this is my rendition of them. And, um, and this is what I came up with. So, uh, he always has this kind of tattered vest on. It seems like his arms and shoulders are usually showing. Um, sometimes I've seen him in different stuff. So for this specific, uh, well, and I'm going to go in there and I'm going to get all these kind of zombies hanging on to him, onto his legs. And uh, I just wanted, to, you know, to crop them around him. So this kind of little vignette of uh, of the character with uh, these zombies hanging off him. And he's kind of in there. Um, and, you know, especially with the arrows, I wanted to use the arrows inside, you know, in the zombies. So they're very kind of uh, skull-like. Um, but they, you know, they have all these kind of things. I want to try to make it work. And you can see all this is, is I'm just so used to drawing these kinds of things that, uh, it does become some kind of, kind of shorthand, uh, for what I think zombies would look like. Um, but for him, because he's shooting these zombies in their heads, <laughs> I try to just, uh, put a few arrows and some zombie heads, you know, to have fun with it. Um, but this stage, I always think, um, is preliminary to what's really going to happen. Once I come af after it with uh, my watercolors and get my bigger brush pen in uh, to get the real contrast of what happens uh, with this stuff. Um, I don't want to overdo the this kind of thing but if you don't get some of those details in early uh, I can lose them uh, and I'll just move on in some way so for me uh, adding the faces and all that kind of stuff like usually I would usually use a micron for a, some of this but um, because I just got this this new marker I, I was like I'm gonna try as much as I can to uh, to use it for a lot of the detail um, my style is a pretty bold style, so I don't need super tight details with things like this. Um, but as I'm looking at it now, you know, all again, like, it's so great to have some type of a brush that, uh, a marker that's, it's kind of like a brush that gives me a certain amount of the detail. And, I, you know, as I'm going across it with my, uh, my feelings with the, perspective and just the design is I just can't help myself by adding some more of them so this character wasn't even there at first but I kind of felt like because the other one went off to that side that uh, it'd be good to focus in with another character off that leg the second leg um, and just have some other ones in the background as it goes through so the good thing about this uh, brush pen it's it has a really nice um, thick thin line 
And uh, so even though I'll come back in at the end to uh, to get a little more contrast, I'm finding that you know I'm getting some pretty good stuff. Like I'm getting a feel. I can put hair in. I could put things like that. That it's a certain amount of detail. And then know that once I get in with color, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring out some more of those darks. But it's all shapes, right? Like you can see, I'm just like I'm kind of following some of my early shapes to feel see if it works out. I can change things on the fly. I'll just be like, all right. This is where this kind of a head is going to be. And it's, it becomes pretty graphic after a while. It's just, it's just a graphic feel. I want them to seem more skull-like uh, than, you know, like, than with flesh. You know? So I'm not going to go as much as into them as uh, they did with, uh, with the comic. But I definitely feel like I'm getting enough of the, um, the feel of a zombie that I, I, when I think of zombies, that this is kind of the way I, I think of them. Um, I tend not to put any of the, it's like white eyes, you know, or if there's color, there would be yellow or red or something like that. So I'm going in with my, uh, my brush pen, my Pentel pocket brush pen, uh, which gives all that texture. And it's very broad. And this is where, again, like I'm like, okay, this uh, kind of anchors the illustration down before I go in with that color. And I'm just putting in shapes, making sure that, um, again, as a design, that it's interesting. He's popping out more because he's got more darks on him. And I'm trying not to lose everybody here. You know, you want to have it around there. The zombies will pop out a little bit more because of it. But as much as I even do with this brush, I know that I'm going to go in eventually and really put in some more darks, it's heavier stuff with the uh, with the watercolors. Um, once you add some of those uh, colors on top, and then you you just you know you see what what happens eventually. It's all just kind of fluid. But when I'm looking at this, I keep saying, you know, where's the contrast? Especially if this was a black and white piece of art. I like to believe that it basically holds up as a nice black black and white piece of art. Um, I feel like there's a lot of influences from Mignola, all that stuff. Like I'm aware of it, but I also don't want to overdo it um, and get rid of everything. It's not my the way that I do this kind of stuff. But, uh, but it, you know, they kind of add to the excitement of, of this character, knowing that, you know, if, I feel like if he was by, them, by himself, you, uh, you, it wouldn't have been as dynamic not to have had maybe a few little zombies around him. Um, again, so it's, it's kind of nice with that. And I'm, gonna, I'm kind of finishing up this amount. I'm about to get into that color right after this. Just touch-ups. I'm going to get that hair over there. So much more to do. Here we go. Yeah, it's kind of, it's, I'm right there. Feeling pretty good about it. Solid base for when I go after my color right after this. All these little arrows. He's got endless arrows, this character. Okay. So as always, we know I'm a working cartoonist and I've done many books over the years. So on my Amazon.com storefront, one of the books, one of the earliest books I had is Snowman in the Springtime. So we think about this is as um, I'm drawing as zombies and uh, Walking Dead kind of uh, characters. And here I bring Snowman in the Springtime. Uh, but this is about, uh, it's, a, it's for kids, it's for all kinds of 
uh, people who are interested in uh, fun takes on life and the thoughts about them. Um, but the idea of a snowman, if they, you know, they want to live longer, they want to go to the springtime, they long for all that, the thought of it. So I just go through it. It's a very quick little two color piece. Uh, a lot of fun. I do um, lots of different things with the thoughts of uh, what would happen if, if a snowman lived longer. Um, but check it out on my Amazon site. Make sure again, as always though, for these episodes that you're liking and subscribing, but checking out my books are really why I do the channel. So more of a more people can see what I'm doing. I have many books there. And when you support the channel, you support my books, and I'm still working on many. So thanks so much for uh, taking a look at these. No one has springtime. Fun. All right, now it's time for color. So as always, for any kind of convention sketch, um, what I tend to do is use my prang watercolor, uh, semi-moist watercolor. Again, not the higher range of levels of watercolor that are out there, but I, I like them. They're, I can go anywhere with them. And uh, they, I feel like they have a certain amount of, um, of lushness to it. I, I do like the, uh, that it's not too transparent with some of the cheaper watercolors that you can get. But there are much better, better, higher range, I'm sure, to use. But uh, but for me, I love just being able to pull these out, whether I'm at a, a museum or I'm in a convention space, that, uh, that I just need to have my stuff and a little water and they have enough colors. And I just go after it with, uh, with these values. Now, when you start off with any of these types of things, you know, you're usually starting with a very light version of whatever it's going to end up looking like. So to me, I, I wanted to keep uh, some cool colors on the vest and the, the, uh, the legs and all that stuff with uh, whatever other kind of jeans, I suppose. But uh, all this stuff, just laying in some blues first, knowing that I'm going to go right on top of all these eventually. But all this kind of stuff, if you don't do this early and get the, the lighter versions out there, then uh, you don't want to work too dark too fast with watercolor. You want to kind of build. You can always go darker. Um, I think it's important too to think about your... Uh, I'm putting a little browns into his hair instead of blue in comic books. You know, sometimes they'll make the, it's supposed to be black hair, so they'll, they'll put in, um, put it blue with it. But I do want to make it brown, and I'll try to throw it into his skin, uh, even on some zombies over here. Just want to move those colors around so it's not the only place you're seeing brown. I'm kind of going to use some yellows and oranges inside those uh, zombies. But it's good to kind of move uh, these values around so that it's not just one spot. So I'm putting in this deeper green uh, with, this, uh, with the zombies. So I always think of that and yellows and the greens, like that jauntissy kind of that idea. Or uh, I think it really adds to them and it, uh, it pulls them back a little bit. But, a lot, you know, just a little soft wash of that color on them um, I think differentiates them from like a regular human being and as always I'll, I'll try to use some of that green everywhere so it's not just it'll you may not see much of it but it'll uh, unify uh, the actual image as you go through so in here you can see it's starting, I'm starting that layer and I'm just like, okay, here's some of that basic color. So I've established this and um, now I'm going to go in with a deeper orange. None of the colors are very bright and happy. So it's the combinations of some of these. So whenever I'm using a blue uh, or a predominantly blue image, uh, I'll alternate it with its opposite 
its complement um, with the orange. So it's a deeper kind of blue. It's soft right now, but it's deeper. And uh, and I like this orange instead of just like a yellow, uh, knowing that by adding this, uh, eventually when I go in with my darker uh, colors, they'll pop, they'll be there, and it'll just feel like it's everywhere. I want to set an atmosphere around the character, some lights and darks, it's all feel. It's a nice soft round brush. I've had that same brush forever and I, I, I keep wanting to move on from it, but I keep going back to it, I don't know why. Again, it's probably not, it's not the highest level of brush in the whole world, but for me, it seems to work out. This is a, um, I think this is an 80 pound um, sketch paper that I'm using. That's that typical Strathmore uh, paper, but an 80 pound is pretty good. It holds it. I don't. I wouldn't usually with an 80 pound draw on the back of any of these things, so it's just a one time kind of thing. So now I'm going in with some of the darks. I've I've jumped on top of this, and I'm just feeling it out. Like how dark should I get? I don't want to lose everything. But I do want to make this into a uh, a very contrasty atmospheric value, and especially with all the characters around them, I don't I don't want to lose them because it can happen so fast. If you do it too much, you lose some of that stuff. So as I'm working through, it's watering down a little bit more, so I can see everything. But it's not. Um, it's not wiping them out. I also think, you know, maybe some atmosphere in the front of them, like fog or something. That's how I look at it in my brain. And I'm just kind of putting in all of this. All this kind of atmosphere. I like the combinations of this kind of gray with all those colors uh, below them. So you can see the true color sometimes, and then other times it's just grayed out. But now that you're start, I'm starting to make all the big decisions. Like what has to be, what's in true highlight, and then what's everything else that has to go back. But you have to, you know, I'm aggressive, so I just want to, I want to kind of get a feeling here. That, uh, and it's just a sketch, you know, like. It's not something from a comic where it's going to move something else and another thing. This should just be a chance to uh, to get a feeling through that texture. And I feel like most of the time working like this, for my style, this is what uh, what works best for me. Is to slowly kind of build some of these characters with the grays, and get them onto their skin, and get it onto that hair so it's not too light and but that's all you do is kind of move across deeper a little more shadow in his eyes but you got to be careful it's tiny so i keep moving through i've gotten rid of a lot of those bigger highlights now it's really the biggest highlights are on his uh on his shoulders off his arms and everything else is kind of now focused in I'll, let, I'll allow that shoulder stuff to happen. And this is my graphic design part to me. Is it balanced? So I'll, I felt like I needed a little more dark up there. So you see that highlight off of his shoulder a little bit stronger. But once you do something like that, you're like, all right, that's a pretty strong dark. I've got to do it in different places. So every single time you add something, you're like, all right, I've done it there. Now I got to go back in here. I've established a dark, the darkest. So where's that? So now I got to go back in and go like, all right, I got to get rid of some of this. It's too much. Because I don't want to just look up to the sky and then have that be the darkest areas all the time. I want, I want it to come down in the bottom area. And again, like as I'm drawing this, it's just on a board. If I was at a convention, I would be just on a table because you want to draw in front of people. 
uh, as they walk past your table. So, uh, so I'm trying to show you how I'm just kind of moving around and adding. And this is all just whatever you think. Like, this may be right or wrong. Some people may like a little bit. I'm noticing i got to get that arrow back in there. Um, but, I, you know, I feel like it reads pretty well. And um, when you're with watercolor like this, you really just have to uh, be willing to take the chance sometimes to make it a little bit darker, a little bit lighter. But this shows why you start really light. And then every time you're just like, all right, I got to get rid of this or this shouldn't be highlighted. People look that way too early. And I'm getting rid of some of those highlights that I had on the characters at the beginning. Still looking for all of that texture to uh, to kind of bring some, you know, some contrast. Really kind of getting down this to the end. It's not much I can do now. I don't want to wipe it out. And if you saw this uh, in real life, there's plenty of detail. I'll, I'll even go back in at the very end and tighten up some of that line. I give it a little bit more um, weight around some of the zombies or put a little bit more of uh, detail uh, on the gun a little bit, you know, the crossbow thing. So I'm just, there's little touches that have to be done. And for this, I'm trying just to show you really 95 to 98% of really what I do with this. Even at the end, as I'm basically here, I'm like, you know, what else is there here that I need to do? I keep looking and, um, you know, I'm going to grab a pen uh, and just do those little last touches again. These are the things that bother me. Like, I'm like, uh, I think I need something up higher. So that one dark part isn't enough. And to me, in my eye, this is more balanced as I go through. Everybody's got a different sense of this. I'll just keep working at it. I'll keep looking for it. it. Needs a little bit more dark. Is this too dark? You know, like, but, uh, you as an artist, you really have to, to go with your gut and uh, and hope that you're giving, you know, the best indication of of how you see this piece. Okay, so again, I'm really just down to the last bits of it. Um, I think uh, I think this is a pretty typical sketch about what I do in conventions. Um, so thanks as always for viewing this episode on this channel and again happy birthday to Francis um, hope you enjoy this sketch and I'm uh, can't wait to have to draw another Daryl sometime I like to I have I've drawn Daryl a few times at conventions and he's pretty good he's a he's a great character and you can see with my micron I'm just like little detail little stuff what else can I do All right Thanks again. Looking forward to, uh, to my next episode.